I was listening to everybody, obviously, and I had put down four points, but then since the main topic of discussion was taxes, and I don't want to be left out even on that, <laughs> so I improvised one, which I had already done before in Egypt, and it was quite successful, and I want to present it as another tax that you should raise in many countries. Right after the Arab Spring, which I prefer to call the Arab Autumn, but anyhow, that's another discussion, I went to the Prime Minister of Egypt and told him, okay, now we need a lot of work for the people who haven't been doing much and a lot of you know, lack of investment, lack of work, etc. So why don't you raise a 5% additional tax? And then he said, but everybody will kill us. They will say this is against investment uh, uh, promotion and so on. I said, no, 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 wait a minute. Listen to me to the end. This 5% applies only to the people who already have paid more than a million pounds in taxes, meaning they are already rich. And 5% additional is 50,000. Now they're going to complain because they don't trust you. They know you'll take this 5% and buy a couple of Mercedes for the ministers, I'm sorry, <laughs> or whatever wasted uh, uh, infrastructure that serves nobody. But you tell the people who are paying those 5%, you go and spend the 5%. We will collect from all the municipalities, from all the villages, from all the ministries, projects that they need that we can't finance, and we will price them, and then we tell you guys, we need a school room additional uh, in school number five, it's 50,000 pounds, you are one of those who have to pay 50,000, go and build it. And when you get us a paper that the school uh, classroom has been built, you're done. We issued that law, and there was not one person among the rich, which are the biggest troublemakers who have the, all the power to, to like impose public opinion, even if it's not really public opinion. And that law was not contested. As a matter of fact, many companies have what we know as CSR programs. So for them, this was the first time that they see, oh, now the other buggers have to do it as well. That's a great law, because they already had it. And it was the communication and the implementation that made the difference. And the lesson from this law is that if you let the people join you in all these fantastic projects that you want to do for the country, they feel much more willing to do and to do more. If I for four years have been building classrooms and year five I'm not due to build one, I will be ashamed if I don't continue to do that, even if it's out of my pocket or as a company out of the reserves or whatever. So that law passed in Egypt without resistance, without one single big guy coming out and saying, oh, you're going to scare away the investors, now we're going to have 5% more taxes, nobody will come. Nobody dared say that. So that's one topic that uh, is not my domain, but I just felt like adding something along the discussion. But when you say money, 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 we need money, you're not looking around well enough just around the corner. Like here in Addis Ababa, there are a couple of slums. Anybody who knows the country knows that the land where most of the slums are is hugely valuable. I am currently doing a project in Senegal because I managed to convince the president of this plan and we're currently implementing it. So he gave me a slum. He said, the land becomes yours, 100%. But you have to keep all the slum dwellers there. Now, what we did was to go and collect 10 shacks, build one building on, let's say, 20% of the land, and put a six-story building. Those people move into the building. They pay rent, so they have an acknowledged address, an acknowledged residence, and they freed a bit of land for two buildings where I get 40 shacks to move into them and so on. And over five years, I will have put all the people, without moving them, which is the most terrifying thing for people in the slums, to be moved. And then what is left is a super valuable piece of land that allows enough buildings that I sell on the free market to cover 
the cost of the buildings that I had to give to the government to keep those people there. And my ambition is to go after five years out of the slum having lost nothing. And this would be the formula for the future of eradicating slums. And you can do this in so many slums that are horizontal. Obviously, not in Cairo slums where we have buildings of eight floors. That cannot be implemented. But in Africa, in particular, you have tons and tons of slums. Do you want to know why there are so many slums? Because the beneficiaries from having slums are so numerous that there is no true will to eradicate them. The guy that goes to collect the electricity bill, which is not a bill because the connection is illegal every month, he makes a bit of money for himself. The same applies to the guy who allows them to take water. The same allow, uh, applies to the guy who's supposedly controlling that they have a piece of paper entitling them to be there. Of course, they don't, so they pay him off. So these slum dwellers end up paying much more than the rent they will have to pay once they get into the apartment. They have an address. They can put their kids into school without paying a bribe. So you eradicate a lot of corruption by doing this program, which is so evidently easy, and you create wealth among those people and for your country, because you have land value recognition. Now going back to my other uh, items of how you governments can make money. You put out a highway out of the center of, uh, let's say, Addis Ababa to no man's land. The land around the highway in no man's land becomes immediately very valuable. You want social housing, you come to a guy like me, and then you tell me, look here, we're going to give you 10 million square meters. But in, you have four years to consume 2.5 million by building units that are not allowed to be larger than 60, 63 meters, so that you're sure that the rich will not compete with the poor. They're not allowed to buy two units. They're not allowed even to put them together. This means I am obliged to make this happen at a scale that is enormously quick. Otherwise, I will lose the right to the next uh, part of the land bank, which means I cannot overprice. Otherwise, I will not be able to finish 2.5 million meters. But the next 2.5 million meters automatically became much more valuable then I am entitled to get it for based on the original uh, contract. So you're allowing me to create a profit, but much later, which is also in your, uh, uh, you know, along your plan. And these master developments, they're so important because they give people a chance to create a livelihood. They create uh, job opportunities. The people who built initially in the middle of nowhere are the people that live in the first few houses. They develop a market. You put the school so that you also benefit when you get to the next two and a half million meters. So you have also incentive to do a lot of public services because it enhances your personal value of the land bank that you will be getting. Now, do this six, seven times, get 10, 20 people like me, you'll get a couple of million units. The other thing which is very sad in Africa is the amount of units that are closed and not utilized. In Egypt, we have 14 million apartments and houses unutilized. And do you know why? Because the legal system is biased to the poor. When I go to a judge and tell him, this guy's not paying the rent or the installment because he bought it on uh, installments, he will take the side of the small guy. You're a rich man, you can wait. He doesn't have money. But what they've done with this is that nobody rents his apartment because he doesn't want the headache of having to wait five, six years to get rid of a tenant or a buyer that's not paying. And this in itself is a crime because 14 million units are worth billions and billions and billions, and they're not utilized. So I think this would be a top priority for governments to recognize that they're not doing the poor a favor by siding with them, but rather eliminating their chances to rent an apartment because nobody would give it to them. Thank you, Sami.